Last month I made $13,000 in my business. It was my best month ever. The month before that I made $10,000 in my business. It was so exciting and I was ready to quit. I was burnt out. I was ready to throw in the towel after having this YouTube channel for seven years, full time for over a year now, quit my corporate job, have my dream life and I was burnt out. I was struggling. I was stressed. I was bad. It was it was just really bad. But since then, I've gotten my joy back. I've gotten my passion back and it's been such a roller coaster of a couple months that I wanted to share that with you. And with every single YouTube video that I put out, I've made over a thousand videos on this channel, hundreds of videos on my entrepreneurship channel. And with every single video that I create, I think of somebody. Typically, it's somebody in the comment section, somebody that I know needs to hear that story, needs to hear those tips on how to save money, the, the, to get the education to learn how to start investing, to start creating side hustles, whatever it is. I think about that person that needs to hear it, that needs to get out of that cycle, that needs to stop living paycheck to paycheck. And I think about them throughout the video. And today, that person is you. Today, I'm talking to you, the person that is burnt out, the person that is struggling, the person that just wants to find joy. And maybe you struggle with ADHD like I do. I feel like ADHD burnout and the ADHD burnout cycle is a lot different than typical burnout cycles. And I have found that it's been a struggle. But since then, I have found joy again. And it's crazy because there was times a couple months ago, I didn't have that. And it was a dark place. It was a hard place. It was just beat down. And I feel like today may be a little bit emotional. So I apologize in advance, but I'm going to keep it together for you guys. But I want to talk about the things that first made me realize that I was in that burnout phase. And then also what I did to get out of it because there was specific things that I did to overcome that burnout. And these are things that will work for you if you have ADHD, if you don't have ADHD, if you're a content creator, if you're not a content creator, but just general things that will help to get yourself out of burnout. And I think they're also good things to help prevent burnout as well. So I realized that I was in burnout when a lot of the things that used to bring me joy, that used to excite me specifically about my business started being a burden. And I lost a lot of motivation and a lot of the things like sometimes creating videos. I used to love creating videos and sitting down and chatting with you guys and I would get so excited to do it. Then it became a burden like, oh, like I got to put my hair on makeup on. It's exhausting all of that and just the utter exhaustion. And then also along with that is the physical aspects of burnout. My jaw would just be in so much pain and I actually had to get Botox because it's just so painful. So I got Botox my masseters because at night I would clench from the stress of it. And then the back of my my neck is just so tense and I would just have this tension from all the way back here and in my jaw. And I realized that that's even worse now. Typically my jaw is bad, but even worse when I'm dealing with burnout. I would have lack of motivation, especially with deadlines. I would have deadlines from myself that I put on myself. Okay, you gotta get this video out by this day or this blog post or this more brand or whoever that someone that I'm partnering with. And in my head, I'd be like, screw it. It is what it is, which is funny because typically people with ADHD, they thrive on deadlines. They're like, okay, we're, we got pressure on. We got that deadline. Me, I, screw it. I don't even care. It is what it is, which obviously I would, I would still do it, but my mind would be like, it's, it's too late now. I don't even care. Nope. We're it's, it's done. That was a big one. Another one was just my emotional guard was up. My emotion. I just didn't care. I just didn't whatever, do whatever you want. Sure. You just, you want to get takeout tonight, whatever. I don't even care. Like I just like gave up that, like it is what it is. It is, it is. Another thing was the state of my house. And I would tell Jamie, very serious, that the state of the house when you come home from work is the state of my mental house. If you come home and you walk in the door and the house is just chaos, like toys everywhere, the island, just stuff everywhere, dishes are not done, and just the house is just chaos, 
that means that my day has just been chaos. My mental load has been chaos and I just said, screw it. I don't even care. If you come home and the house is pretty put together, we've had a good day. If you come home and the house is like immaculate, I was, I was having a good day. So the state of the house really depended on my mental state and was a good reflection of my mental state. I recently saw on TikTok that was talking about how millennials are struggling with burnout a lot more than other generations. And the hypothesis of this person was that because millennials can no longer have hobbies, that a lot of the times millennials have to find ways to monetize their hobbies guilty. I am so guilty of that. That's how this channel started out. It started out as a hobby and then I went to a side hustle and now it's my full-time job that pays our mortgage. And that's crazy. But I found this even with myself. I wanted to start doing resin art. I think I live in South Florida, West Palm Beach, and it's very coastal here. And I think the resin art with like the ocean, I think it's absolutely beautiful. I love resin art. Absolutely love it. And I wanted to start making it. And I was like, that would be such a fun hobby to start making. And then I was like, oh, Kelly, like you could start an Etsy shop and start selling it and do all these stuff. And then I was like, Kelly, can you just have a hobby? Just have a hobby that you don't have to monetize. You don't have to turn into a side hustle. You don't have to do anything. You can just enjoy it. And that is so hard for me. Even buying a little game. I've recently bought a little like Kamboodle game, Cam I don't know, it was some game I saw on TikTok and I was like, this will be good to give me a mental break, all that stuff. And it's a little one that you like shift around and it's a lot of fun. But even that I'm like, okay, but that's wasting time. But that's, that's, uh, I don't know, I should be doing something else. No, Kelly, like just, just enjoy yourself. So the struggle that we have to uh, monetize every hobby is, is a struggle. So I challenge you, find a hobby that you're not gonna turn into a side hustle. Find a hobby that you're not gonna monetize in any way. That is really big and something that I'm still working on. I really should start this resin art because I think it would be so much fun and I think they're just absolutely beautiful. So hobby that you don't monetize is number one. Another struggle that I've had with burnout is not being able to disengage from my work. So not being able to let go at the end of the day. I always said that when I worked in my corporate job that I was so good at when at five o'clock hit or 4.30 hit, whatever my time was to clock out, I clocked out and I was done. I didn't have email my phone. I didn't go on my work computer. And when I was done for the day, I was done for the day. People would talk about how they'd be checking emails at night and all this stuff and getting calls from sales teams and all this stuff. And I'm like, that's on you. I do not do that. Now I was working my side hustle. I was working my YouTube channel, but work stuff, mm -mm, I cut it off. So I had that, that wall up so high that you could not get in. And that's not the case with my business. Not at all. I wake up at two o'clock in the morning because I have insomnia. I'll be checking my work email. I'll be checking YouTube comments. I'll be checking all this stuff. I'm like, why Kelly? Can you just, can you just not and just disengage? I don't think I've ever gone on a vacation where I didn't work at all. Even my honeymoon, I was editing videos. Cause I was like, Hey, we're here. We're, we're at sea for two days. I might as well edit a little bit. Like I have such a hard time disengaging. And one thing that I'm working on, and I've been working on it the past couple of months, which has really helped with this burnout is before I leave at the end of the day, or before I stop working at the end of the day, I only typically work during nap time. So nap time is up. I hear Peyton start to wake up or I'm about to wake her up. I will then make a to-do list for tomorrow. And what this does is this helps me to really think about, okay, these are the tasks that I got done today. These are my tasks for tomorrow. These are my three needle movers. These are the three top things that I want to work on tomorrow. And I know that I have enough time to get these done. And I realized that when I was doing this, it really helped me just to be able to turn my brain off, almost like brain dumping. When I was able to put it down on paper, I was able to let go of my brain rather than having to be like, okay, don't forget this. Don't forget that. Don't forget all this stuff. And are you going to have enough time? Is there enough time? Like what if Peyton wakes up during the time or what if all this stuff? Like, no, I was just able to put it down and disengage. And if there are times throughout the night that I think of something, oh, you got to do this or, oh, this would be a great blog idea. Or, oh, this comes up. I just pull up my phone, send a quick email to myself. And then I deal with it in the morning. I deal with it the next day. But that way I'm able to just shut, shut it off and it has really helped. Now it's not perfect, but doing that list before you leave work is really going to help you just to be able to let go and 
Stop, stop trying to hold on to this stuff. Stop trying to not forget it and let the paper, let your to-do list work for tomorrow. Next is journaling. And journaling is something that I've been doing consistently for a couple of months now. I've been doing it for probably almost a year now, but very, very consistently for a couple of months now. And this has been a game changer. And I know that a lot of people think that journaling is too woo-woo or whatever it is, but it's been such a game changer for me. And I honestly have thought about doing a video dedicated to journaling, but I don't know how you guys would think about that. So let me know down below in the comments, would you like a video about journaling? Yes, no, I have done a lot of research on journaling and making sure that it's productive and a good use of your time and all of that. But I personally take journaling almost as, and I don't wanna get religious on you, but when I'm journaling, I'm doing two things. I am one, kind of brain dumping all of my thoughts, getting deep, maybe doing some journal prompts, all of that. But then I also am praying. And when I do my journaling, I do it with my quiet time in the morning. So I'm reading my, I read my Bible and then I write out my prayer. And so I kind of am writing out as I'm praying, as I'm journaling, as I'm reading them, like it's kind of like an all in one type of thing. Like if I want someone ever were to read it, they'd be like, what is going on in Kelly's head? Like one minute she's like praying for this person to be healed from cancer. The next minute she's like praying that she gets clarity on this. The next minute she's thankful for this. The next person she, she's doing her gratitude and this and that. I just a whole like jumbled up, but that's what works best for me. But my coach, my business coach, actually, Corey Wilkes, he said in a recent uh, blog post and I wanted to share it with you and he said journaling helps me put my life back into perspective and break through mental plateaus journaling also acts as a combination of reflecting and recharging for me and that is so true that is exactly how it is for me and I always challenge myself to do three pages of journaling so as I'm journaling I always like to do three pages I have found that the first page is very surface level it's very you know, these are the, the things I'm grateful for. This is like the very surface of what I'm thinking. When I get to page two and three, that's when the deep stuff comes out. That's when the stuff that like, the really stuff that I'm struggling with, the stuff that I'm suppressing, the stuff that I don't want my brain to go there, that's when that comes out. And it's really just to help me to really like process it and be like, whoa, I didn't even know I was thinking that. I didn't even know I was struggling with that until I start journaling and I'm like, all right, yep, that was that was a lot that we just worked through, but it's so helpful for me just to be able to process those things. And a lot of times you just like, I just go freehand, just writing it out. I don't care about penmanship. I don't care about anything else. I just go, 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 go. And I really try to not stop writing. So I try to not lift up my pen. I try to just keep on having my brain go. And sometimes it's two to three pages. Sometimes it's five or six pages and you never know what, what's going to happen. But I always challenge myself to push through at least two pages, but my goal is three. And that has been really helpful. Now, this next next part, I don't talk about my faith a lot here on the channel. I, I don't. You A lot of you know, especially if you've been watching long enough, I kind of drop little hints that I am a Christian. And I just don't talk about my faith a lot here on YouTube. I talk a lot about it in other places of my life. But it is something that is a very, very, very big part of my life and my, my walk, my family, all that stuff. We're involved in the church and... Um, it's a very big part of me and I want to share with this story now I'm not gonna get like super religious or anything like that So stay with me, but I was just journaling and praying and just just really saying like I really want to Get my joy back. I really want to enjoy the work that I'm doing. I really want to just have so much passion and energy and feel that that joy in not only my work, but also in the day-to-day -day life with Peyton and my husband and my daughter is a toddler and come with it a lot of tantrums and teething and long days and a lot of stress, but also some wonderful, amazing, funny moments. She's got so much personality. She's learning so much and talking and all that stuff. And she still says dada 50 million times a day and never says mama. She'll say every other word, but not mama. But frustrating but she's still so fun and so just amazing and then we have my husband Jamie who's so amazing as well and there have been times with all three of those my my business as a mom life as a wife life that I've just felt burnt out and I've just felt exhausted and all of that and I was like I just want that joy I just want that 
that passion. And I just really, truly want to enjoy my life and my day-to-day -day life. And as I'm working, I really want to enjoy it. And if you were to ask me five years ago, Kelly, what, what do you want your life to look like? You know, those things that you hear five years ago, what is your, what do you want your life to get, look like? I would say, I want to quit my corporate job and do YouTube full time to be a mom and to be in a happy marriage. That would be what I would say. And I looked back that day and I realized, Kelly, you have all of those things, all of it. You quit your job. You are running a full-time business. You're helping people. You're impacting people. You're changing lives. You are getting countless messages on a weekly basis about how you're helping people. You have an amazing daughter who is thriving and growing and learning so much. You have an amazing husband. You have a happy marriage. You have happy friendships. Like You have exactly what you wanted five years ago. And I really just needed that perspective shift of like, Kelly, you have what it is. And I think one of the biggest things that I've gotten out of this in the burnout and coming through the burnout is just really reflecting on what I do have. And that day when I was praying those things, I, I think I had a filming day or working. I don't remember what it was, but I remember feeding Peyton lunch and having like, I felt like I had the biggest like aha moment from God. And he was just like, Kelly... Remember what you prayed for this morning? How's your day going? Yeah, it's pretty amazing, isn't it? And not only is your your day amazing and you're doing all these things, but I'm the one that gave it to you. And it was just so like, just made me remember of where my priorities are and that I need to choose joy. I need to choose to look for the positive in things. And I've learned that as I am in gratitude and as I'm doing different things, I'm looking for them. And I've changed how I journal. Instead of doing three things I'm thankful for, I do. What are the three best things that happened yesterday? What are the things that I love about my daughter today? What are the things I love about my husband today? And when I do that, I find that my brain subconsciously looks for them. And I look for, oh yeah, tomorrow I can write this down. This is a really amazing moment. Or this is something that's so funny that Peyton did. Or this is something that my husband Jamie did that really showed me that he loves me today. And it just trains your brain to look for those things. So easy. It's it's so easy for us with the media, with just life, all that stuff to look for the negative. And I found that when I was in that burnout, I was looking for the negative. I was looking for the stuff. I was calling up a friend and be like, can I just vent? I just need to vent, I need, which I think is healthy to vent. But at the same time, it was a day to day. I just wanted to complain. I just wanted to vent and that's not healthy. healthy. She doesn't want to hear that stuff. And just having that mindset shift was such a game changer. So all of that came from journaling, which I know that was a really long candidate on journaling, but having that mindset shift was so amazing and just such a game changer of, okay, we, we can work through this. And I also want to remind you that all of this burnout that I've had was all when I was having the best months of my business, which just shows that money doesn't solve our problems. I get asked this all the time of, you know, oh, well, when, when I start making this much money, then I won't be worried about, you know, this anymore and this and this and all this stuff. And if you can't manage your finances here, you're not going to be able to manage your finances here with lifestyle shift creep with all these different things coming in. Trust me, money does not solve those problems. We make, oh gosh, I don't even know how many times it was from when I started this channel. We make a lot more money than when I first started this channel. We have grown in our careers. We've grown in so many different things. And we still have these struggles. Yes, money helps a lot, but still deal with burnout, still deal with depression, still deal with anxiety. So trust me, money does not solve those problems. Some things that I have done to also help with a burnout on a little bit of a lighter note is get my house in order. So like I said, that the state of the house is the state of my mental capacity for that day. A lot of that has come from also decluttering and coming up with systems of, you know, doing the dishes at least once a day. It doesn't have to be 
clean kitchen at night, but at least once a day, make sure the dishes are done so that way they're not building up. And coming up with organization systems and different things like that has really helped. I am actually speaking at a free event, which is so cool. It's happening next week and September 11th to the 15th, I think it is. And I'm speaking alongside some amazing people like Catherine Clutterbug and Frugal Fit Mom, Dana K. White, Secret Slob, all these people, which is just such a dream come true. I'm giving a talk on not having a scarcity mindset with your money, but these ladies are killing it with so many amazing things, just topics on organization to home management to money and finances, like I'm talking about, and just so many different things. So they do have free tickets. I'll have a ticket linked for you down below to get it for free. They do have an option to upgrade. It's super affordable and you can get access right now and then lifetime access. Otherwise, it's just during that week, but it's such an amazing event. I have already gone through a lot of the talks already and I've learned so much, but having systems in my house and having my house in order has really helped with the burnout. And even things like taking 10 minutes after Peyton goes to bed and cleaning up all the toys, the next morning when I wake up and there's not just toys everywhere, yeah, it helps. It really does help those little things. That has been a big one. Also, my health and fitness. Exercise has been really big and just getting out and moving and going to the gym. It's something that I think I don't need in the day or I don't have time, but then after I do or if I miss a week, I feel it. If I miss a workout or two, I don't really feel it. But if I go a week without working out, I'm like, okay, we can we can feel the difference here. Just the endorphins and how I'm feeling. I don't necessarily work out just for the physical aspect of like losing weight or anything like that, but just the mental. Whew. When I have a good workout class where I'm sweating, I can feel so much more clarity after. It's amazing. And then also eating better. Now I'm not saying cutting out junk food because I love me some ice cream and pasta and stuff, but adding some more vegetables in. There's been days where I wouldn't eat a fruit or vegetable at all. So even just getting to the point of eating at least one serving of fruits and vegetables or having a smoothie or something like that, but just getting better healthy eating habits has definitely helped a lot too. Prioritizing sleep, but making sure that I'm getting at least seven to eight hours of sleep. I, I require a lot of sleep. So my goal is in by bed 10 p.m. Doesn't happen every night, but my sleep has definitely helped. When I am getting a good night's sleep, it definitely helps. And then also prioritizing friendships and making sure that I am putting in time for friends, which is hard for me because I can only work when Peyton is asleep and taking naps. And so if I'm going out on a play date, then it cuts in, like then we typically have a shorter short nap or if a friend calls me when I'm working and they're like, Kelly, you're always working or you're always busy when I want to talk to you saying, you know what? Okay. We can take 10 minutes to talk or different things like that. It really just has made such a difference in just pouring into those friendships and having them pour into you as well. So I hope this was helpful. I'm bringing back the secret emoji. I used to do this way back. So if you made it to the end, I know this is a long video, but I hope it was helpful. Leave the secret emoji down below in the comments and let's keep the conversation going. If you want to see day in the life of a stay at home mom and full-time content creator, what our life looks like in a day, check out this video here. And if you want to see how much I made this month on YouTube and behind the scenes of how much I make online, check out this video here. <laughs>